Hey guys, how's it going? In the last few videos about general chemistry, we've talked a lot about bonding, atoms, and valence shells. Now it's time for us again to stoichiometry and the math side of chemistry. I don't want you to worry, the same way that we took our time talking about chemical bonding, ionic bonding, atoms, and valence shell, we're going to give stoichiometry the same treatment. We're going to go slowly and focus on each of the steps and how we build our relationships. So. Let's talk about math. In order to standardize the math, we're going to stick to one system. That system is the base unit, SI system. So when we measure length, we're going to do it in meters. If we measure mass, it's in grams. Volume, it's in liters. And there's other base units that we'll learn along the way, such as moles that we're going to learn later on in this video. Another really important thing is SI prefixes. More or less, in chemistry, there's instances where we're talking about large quantities and other instances where we're talking about very small quantities. The numbers can get pretty big, so the prefixes help us manage large or small numbers. For example, one kilogram equals a thousand grams. So we're able to make that relationship between a thousand grams and one kilogram. Don't worry about not getting a grasp on the SI prefixes and base units just yet. The best way to familiarize yourself with this information is through practice problems. And after we talk about the concepts of some of these mathematical relationships and stoichiometry, we're going to do some practice problems and digest and go step by step. And it's through that process that we'll be able to understand more about base unit conversions and SI prefixes. The basis of stoichiometry revolves around quantifying atoms. But there's one thing that we have to think about. Atoms are really, really small. Fluorine we saw was 42 picometers, chlorine was 79, and bromine was 94 picometers when we talked about atomic radius and periodic trends. But what is a picometer and how does it relate to meters? Well, one picometer is one times 10 to the negative 12th meters. That's a lot of zeros. Now that we understand the extreme range that we're talking about with atoms being so small, it might be a really good idea to find a way that we can represent large quantities. And that's where the mole comes in, or Avogadro's number. One mole actually equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules. So now we have a conversion. It's the same type of conversion how you can say a dozen eggs and you know it equals 12. Every time you hear a mole, it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So we've standardized some things. We know that one mole of hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, and even methanol is still the same amount of stuff. Another quantity is something that we're going to see time and time again throughout chemistry. Because these molecules are so small, we constantly refer to one mole of that molecule. We'll see it when we balance chemical equations and even so on after that. The, the numbers that are within the molecule, we call these the subscripts. They represent the amount of atoms that are used to build up one molecule. But the numbers to the left, the coefficients, they represent the amount of moles of that molecule we have. For example, we have three moles of water and three moles of hydrogen peroxide. It's the same amount of stuff, but one molecule of hydrogen peroxide has two oxygens and two hydrogens, whereas one molecule of water is one oxygen and two hydrogens. There's a few more relationships that we can build. So remember when we were talking about the periodic table and how much properties we know about an element on the table? And one of those properties was atomic mass measured in AMU. What does atomic mass unit mean? Well, one gram per mole equals one AMU. So all the atomic weights that we see in the periodic table can be converted to a relationship that relates mass with the number of moles. So for example, carbon is 12 AMU, about. So it's actually 12 grams per mole. So a single mole of carbon weighs about 12 grams. 
It's actually really handy because if we weigh a sample of gold or copper or sodium, based off the weight, we can learn how many moles are in that sample. But there's another problem. Not everything is just elements. We know that these elements come together to form molecules. So how can we find the same relationship, the grams per mole, that we had for atoms, but for molecules? That's where we talk about finding the molecular weight. So let's use the example of two pentanone as an example of finding its molecular weight. This molecule has five carbons, 10 hydrogens, and one oxygen. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna look at a periodic table and find the atomic weight of hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Then we're gonna take the value of hydrogen, multiply it by 10, carbons by five, and leave oxygen just as is. We're gonna add all these numbers together, and then we're gonna find the formula mass, or the molecular weight, of two pentanone. Now, we have a formula mass of 86.13 grams per mole of two pentanone. So now we can find the same relationship with a molecule. Finding molecular weights and using the conversions of grams per mole is something that we're gonna use time and time again as we study chemistry. I know this video might have seemed a little rushed and there's a lot of new information being thrown at you. But the next few videos, we're gonna refresh and retalk about this information time and time again. And then when we do practice problems, we're gonna break it down even further. So the collection of all these videos together will hopefully make a really strong foundation of stoichiometry to help in your studies. Remember, all the graphics that you see throughout this video are for free digital download on my website. So have a great day.